should be very careful how he builds. Are you with me, church? Amen. Going forward, we need to understand certain doctrines in the Bible and hold fast to those beliefs so that when we go out there, no one can confuse us. If people come in here to preach, they cannot confuse us because we know what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. It's very, very important that we study to show ourselves approved of God. Work men and women, women rightly dividing the word of truth, knowing what was law and what was grace or what is grace now. Are you with me, church? Amen. 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 The right definition of righteousness. We need to understand that we don't gain righteousness by what we do. What did I say? We don't gain righteousness by what we do. No. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that our righteousness is like a filthy rag. The filthy rag is, let me explain how it is. How Isaiah puts it. The filthy rag is the rag, not the rag in your home. That you use in cleaning. Are you with me, church? Amen. He was referring to the rack in the in the surgery room. Amen. The rack they use in cleaning the blood after surgery. Amen. Or when a woman has given birth, that you know, the ones that come out of it, that rack they use are probably kept kept somewhere for about a month or two. Think about it. That's how our righteousness smells before God. Can you put your mind to it? Amen? Amen. That's filthy. Self-effort is filthy in the eyes of God because you cannot. If you break one law, you have broken everything. And there's no way you can say that me, I don't steal, but I lie. Sin is sin. Are you with me, church? Yes. Are you with me, church? Yes. What is the right definition of righteousness? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, we read because we are laying foundation and we're building upon as we get into missions, there are certain things we need to understand and hold fast to it. Are you with me, church? Because if those who went ahead suffered and they went through certain things, we are not exempted. We will also go through them. And therefore, we need to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. We need to understand our authorities going forward, standing the reason why you are still here as a believer. Are you with me, church? Very, very important. The foundation we are laying is the righteousness of Christ. The right definition. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let everybody say his righteousness. His righteousness. Say it as you mean it. His righteousness. His righteousness. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be provided for you. Now, before I come to seek ye first, let me start with seek ye first. Seek ye first means that it's the primary thing. For you to become a believer and a child of God, you must seek first the primary, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And in addition, his, his righteousness. So, first means first. First simply means first. The primary. That is the first step. The kingdom of God. And we try to explain what the kingdom of God is. And we found out that the kingdom of God is not a place that we go to. Amen? Amen. So even when Jesus Christ said that the kingdom of God has come repent. Amen? Amen. He was referring to himself. The kingdom of God is the rule of God in the heart of man. 
So when the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. He said, when you stand to pray, say, our Father in heaven, thy kingdom come. The rule of God in the hearts of men. That is the kingdom of God. Are you with me, church? Amen. The kingdom of God. What is it and what is not? Paul says that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. Amen? Amen. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink. That is to say that the kingdom of God is not without man. But righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is to say that the kingdom of God is something within man. The righteousness of God. The peace of God. We have peace with God and the peace of God. The peace we are talking about is not something outward. It is the peace that comes from God. When Jesus Christ resurrected and he went in into that house. Where the disciples were afraid. And so they were hiding themselves. The very first thing he uttered, the very first words he said was, My peace I give unto you. My peace, not any other peace, but my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. <coughs> Hallelujah. The peace of God. These are all embodied in the kingdom of God. And so, when you allow God to rule, to reign in your heart. You accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You have accepted the kingdom of God. That's the entrance. Amen. Amen. And then once you, are, you enter into the kingdom. Or the kingdom enters you. In addition you see his righteousness. Everybody say his righteousness. His righteousness. Or say it as you mean it. His righteousness. his righteousness. You see I don't know why people always miss this word this. His means is not your righteousness. It's not your good works. It is about his righteousness. Simple English. His. Third person. His righteousness. That's what we seek for. In the Old Testament. I think I've said it. mentioned it here before. Every year. The sinner. Will carry a lamp without blemish, depending upon your status in life. It could be a dove, it could be a cow. But let me talk about the lamp that together with the sins of the world. So, what he does is he carries the lamp without blemish, goes into the temple. Listen very carefully. His righteousness, not your righteousness. And then, the priest, the high priest, who represents the eyes of God, are you with me, church? Will examine the lamp or the offering that me and you or the sinner has brought. Amen? If God comes to you and all your sins go into that animal and you go scot free. And the animal is killed. Do you get the picture of Christ? Amen? Amen? And the animal is killed in your place. The righteousness of the animal becomes your righteousness. So once you know that it's not about your righteousness, when you go out there and you want to talk to somebody who already knows you. When I was in secondary school, I used to smoke uh, cigarettes. I used to smoke Indian men. Believe me, I used to do all that. Those who knew me when I was growing up, they just look at me. So, sometimes there's somebody I don't even know. He meets me, looks at my face, says, Hey, I go over here by you. <laughs> and I'm like, I've not done anything to this person. How? Yes, why do they say things like that? And in fact, I was bad. Everybody that has not the son of God in him is a child of the devil. You are not the chosen generation. You are condemned already. But once you believe in Christ and you step over from darkness to light, even if you fall, 
Even if you commit sin, eh, you fall in Christ. That's a picture of the ark. Noah's ark. Listen carefully. When the ark was moving and the waves were coming, eh, some of the animals who couldn't hold on, they fell in the ark. They didn't fall outside the ark. Are you with me, church? The salvation message here. <laughs> it's powerful. Once you have crossed over, you have crossed over. No wonder we jump and we praise God. Okay? So now, it is about His righteousness. And once we keep seeking His righteousness and being established in God's righteousness, all other things become ours. Hallelujah. Amen. And so now God does not look at me and you again. So now, I go out there and I see somebody who remembers me and begins to accuse me. That, hey, this guy. I say, my friend, you don't know who you are talking to. I'm a new creature. I met a guy like that in Accra to do. He's now a born again Christian. Because he knew me, what I, I used to do. And then when he met me, hey, I say, my friend, I'm not there. And he looked at me and he looked at me and he took a closer look. And when I began to talk to him, he knew immediately this guy is a changed guy. Immediately he went to speak, look for that thing that made me what I am. And he's in the Lord till today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We will meet people like that who will tell us all kinds of things. But if you understand where your righteousness is, you point them to Christ. Amen. 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 So it's not about me anymore. It's about Christ Jesus. If you have anything, talk to Christ about it. It's not about my righteousness. It is about His righteousness. His righteousness. And not your righteousness. So, what has the right understanding of your righteousness got to do with expecting good to happen to you today? He says, once we seek that all other things will be provided for us. Not tomorrow, but today. Amen. 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 When you know who your righteousness is, mm -hmm. and you seek Him mm -hmm. today, 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 the doors will open for you. Amen. I'm telling you, you will lack nothing. Amen. 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 You see, when Jesus Christ hung on the cross, and he said, it is finished. There is nothing that can be added to it. When he said, it is finished, it means completely complete. It is finished. All of a sudden. Now, I have a message called the, the, two, uh, the, 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 the mysteries of the double doors. There are double doors in the tabernacle. The first one I just want to talk about a little bit is about the veil that divided the people from the presence of God. Hallelujah. They could not come to God. And so when Jesus said it is finished, the veil torn, got torn from top to bottom. Hallelujah. So it's not like somebody ripped it from bottom to the top. From top to bottom. Boom. And that gate opened. So now we have access to the throne of grace. So now, my topic again, the role of the high priest in missions, we are invited to come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and gain grace and help in times of need. Because of the finished work of Jesus, we can now come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain whatever we want. Because it's not about your righteousness or your goodness or anything anymore. It's about his righteousness. When I see the blood, I will pass over. Hallelujah. Amen. When I see the blood, I will pass over. Amen. Amen. So once that happens, we have it. So, conversely, when they fail in terms of their behavior, there are people who think that righteousness is about doing doing good works. There's nothing wrong with doing good works. Amen? Amen. 
But people who do that, when they fail in those good works, they think they are unrighteous. And this is the wrong definition. Because righteousness has nothing to do with about your with about your good works. Amen? Amen. So let's go back to what the Bible has to say. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he, God, made him who? Jesus Christ, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. God made Jesus who knew no sin to become sin for us. Amen? Amen. What sin did Jesus Christ commit to become sin? Nothing. In him was no sin. Praise the name of the living God. But the Bible says that God made him to become sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. This is what we call the divine exchange. Are you with me, church? If Christ didn't do anything and yet he became sin. In other words, what? It means we also didn't do anything to become what? Righteous. Are you with me? There is nothing you can do to become righteous. Praise the name of the living God. So therefore we are not righteous because we do right. We became righteous because of what Jesus did for us. At the cross. He died in our place. So what is righteousness? Therefore righteousness is not based on our right doing. I keep repeating it. Righteousness is not based on your right doing. It is based entirely on Jesus' right doing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Therefore, Christianity is not about doing right to become righteous. No. You see, in the Old Testament, they were doing things. They were doing things. Don't worry. I'll pick it up. We'll get a better start later on. They were doing things. That's obedience. But in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, obedience is believing. When you believe, you enter into the rest of God in Hebrews. Amen? Amen. I repeat that again clearly if you didn't get me. In the Old Testament, they had to do to earn the grace of God or the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But in the New Testament, it's not about doing, but believing. If you can believe, Jesus said all things are possible to him that believe him. Hallelujah. Amen. If only you can believe, all things are possible. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you confess that with your mouth, the Bible says that you are saved. Amen. That is the definition of soteria. You are saved. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not your own righteousness based on what you do. It is not good works. So what is this? It is a gift from God. Amen? Amen. In fact, righteousness is a person. His name is Jesus. Amen. In Jeremiah, the Bible tells us that and his name shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Tikkun. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord our righteousness. Amen? Amen. So righteousness is not something we do, but righteousness is a person and his name is Jesus. Can I have an amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Remember, some for pigs is falling like this, it means time is already catching up. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I know that God. Will have the rest to us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians. But from him you are in Christ. Are you in Christ? Yes. Are you in Christ? Yes. But for him you are in Christ. Who for us became wisdom from God? As well as what? 
as well as what? Righteousness. righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The word righteousness also means justified. It's a judicial word. That means you are declared righteous. Justification means Amen. you are declared righteous. Which is yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just jump on quickly because I think I have about two minutes more. So, so I'm tempted to justify by your good works and trying your best to keep the Ten Commandments to become righteous is a negative way of thinking about God's righteousness. Jesus Christ, I mean, it, it is a good, uh, it is as good as saying the cross is not enough to justify me. That was exactly what Paul was saying. The cross was not enough to justify me. I need to depend on my own good works to make myself clean and righteous before God. The Apostle Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace which is the unmerited favor of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. My friend, I want you to consider carefully what Paul is saying here. He is effectively saying that if you are depending on your own good works, your doing, your own ability to keep perfectly the law, which is the Ten Commandments, to become righteous, then Jesus died for nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what in vain means, for nothing. Mm -hmm. So don't frustrate the grace of God mm -hmm. by depending on your own good works mm -hmm. to make yourself righteous. Mm -hmm. And put God on your side. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Jesus' sacrifice is more than enough to justify you. When he said it is finished, it was finished. And nothing can be added to it. Amen. And when you know that you are justified, when you know that you are righteous, mm -hmm. you can be confident enough. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You can be confident in the grace of God. Knowing that God is on your side, you can expect good things to happen to you today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if God is on your side, who can be against you? If God is on your side, I like a key proverb that says that "se wuno hukwa." Add it to it. "Se wau wuno hukwa." Na u beku na u njami beku ama u gani na pe? Eh? Exactly. That's why we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. So that he will exalt us in due time. Amen. Casting all our cares upon him. For he cares for us. Amen. May the Lord lift up his countenance Amen. over you. Amen. May he bless you. Amen. Make his face shine upon you. Amen. And your family. Amen. I grant you his shalom peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.